What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. So a bit of magic has just landed on my desk. This is the all new powerful latest gaming smartphone by Nubia. That's right people, Red Magic 6 has finally arrived. Now I'm a real fan of gaming smartphones and the Red Magic 6 brings with it some tremendous features for gaming performance, Wi-Fi 6, 5G, an incredible cooling system and of course powered by no less than the latest Snapdragon 888 chipset. Now the phone is priced from 599 US dollars or 509 pounds in the UK. And one of the most indulging part of unboxing a new smartphone is lifting the unit out of the box for the very first time. And it does feel damn good. So just gonna place it nicely to the side and see what else is going on in that box. Okay, so let's just remove that top layer and underneath you will see three boxes of accessories. If I grab the flat envelope first, inside you will see immediately the SIM eject tool and a user manual. So it looks like no silicon case is included with this pack. The next box contains your charging cable that's USB type C to USB type C. And in the last box you will find your fast charger and this is actually a 33 watt fast charger but this phone supports up to 66 watt fast charging. But they didn't include the 66 watt charger. In the box, you only get that 33 watt charger. And we meet once again. Now this phone, even without removing the plastic, feels premium. I can feel a slight weight to it. It's a similar vibe that I get when I unbox a new iPhone. Now check out that design, people. We are talking about glass back, RGB lights on the logo and sides, which I'll show you later. A 64 megapixel triple camera setup on the back. You've got no ugly large camera bump sticking out. The cameras sit in a well-designed row blending in to the design of the phone. I'm actually liking the design of the Red Magic 6. This feels good. And as I already mentioned, there is some weight to it, 220 grams to be precise, and thickness 9.7 millimeters. But back of my mind, I'm already aware that this phone has a massive 5,050 milliamp hour battery and the most advanced cooling system I have ever heard of in a smartphone. Now Nubia is calling it ICE 6.0 which is a hybrid cooling system which combines multiple cooling solutions into one device. So inside you've got an outer layer of graphite with a liquid cooling chamber sandwiched in between. You also have thermal gel, copper foil and an actual physical mini cooling turbofan built inside which spins up to 20,000 RPM. And it is also very silent at only 28 decibels. So this smartphone has a better cooling system than any flagship we have seen to date. So technically, you can expect the very best heat dissipation we have ever seen in a smartphone. And I simply can't wait to put it to the test, push this phone to the limit, and find out if ICE 6.0 cooling is in fact good or not. So we do have a nice large 6.8 inch AMOLED display that's a full HD plus resolution of 2400 by 1080. We do have Gorilla Glass protection but no idea which version and peak brightness is 630 nits. So great for indoors and this is what maximum brightness looks outdoors. Furthermore, we also have a pretty fast and accurate in-display fingerprint sensor with a cool futuristic effect every time you unlock the smartphone. And you can see we do have some bezels at the top and bottom of the smartphone and the front camera is located within that top bezel. So this phone is running Android 11 with Red Magic OS 4 on top. Now if we pull down the notification bar, you have a convenient shortcut to toggle that fan noise on and off as you need it. And here is a taste of what it sounds like. So as you just saw, we have two fan speeds, intelligent mode, or you can put it on high mode for some quick cooling. And there are also lots of other useful quick toggles you can access. For example, RGB lights can be switched on and off. You've got your dark mode, and you can even switch refresh rates from here. Now from the main system settings, you can only go up to 144 Hertz and also everything in between. But I also like how the status bar at the top shows your current refresh rate, which is really handy information. And this can be switched on and off. And you also have simple explanations of each refresh rate, which I think is a cool touch. 
So the 165 hertz refresh rate can be switched by bringing down the notification bar or you can even do it from the in-game menu. I think they kept the 165 option separate from the main settings, possibly as it consumes the highest battery levels. But this is something I will be testing in my full review coming soon and you can see how blazing fast and smooth everything looks when set to 165. Absolutely amazing. Now the Red Magic OS does come with lots of customization options for the launcher, including icons, themes, cool looking live wallpapers, and the RGB lights on the back can also be customized for many scenarios, including charging, playing games, answering the phone, and lots more. Now at the bottom of the smartphone you will find a SIM card tray, and that's a dual SIM 5G tray, so no micro SD expansion included, and next to it you have a microphone, USB Type-C charging port, and a speaker. And on the side we have dedicated capacitive touch trigger buttons and these support a very fast touch sampling of 400 Hz meaning you can press that trigger faster than your opponents giving you that edge in gaming combat. Now the triggers can also be customized with gestures so double taps and even support macro activations. And between those triggers you have another microphone, power button and a vent for the fan. Now if we quickly switch on that fan you will feel the air coming out from this vent and there is also another identical vent just like this on the other side of the phone. And at the top of the phone we have a third microphone and a headphone jack. Now on the other side you have volume rocker, another ventilation for that fan and a special red flick switch. So when you flick that switch, you'll be pleasantly surprised with a nice sound effect entering a dedicated gaming mode. So at any point from now to when playing a game, you can swipe in to access this floating menu, which has lots of gaming options for you to toggle, including the refresh rate, brightness, aiming assist, cooling fan, screen recording options, screenshots, shoulder triggers, customizations, and lots more. So an extensive gaming mode with lots to discover and to enhance your gaming experience. Now the graphics on COD Mobile can be set to very high and frame rate set to max. There is also an option for ultra frame rate but then the graphics gets automatically limited to medium. So let me show you what gameplay looks like on very high and max frame rate and then I will switch later to ultra to show you the difference. And you will notice the FPS meter on the top right giving us a solid 60 FPS. And as you can see, I'm not using the trigger buttons, I've set it to auto fire, but I will show you the triggers in action next. We're capturing B. All right, time to switch up the graphics. I'm going to select ultra frame rate and also activate those triggers. Now a quick look at the frame rate in the top corner, you will notice at least 91 frames per second. The graphics are medium, but it does feel extremely smooth on ultra frame rate. Triggers are also active and it feels so damn good to use the left trigger to aim and the right trigger to shoot, giving you a very console-like experience. Wow, seriously fast response time. Triggers giving you that 400 hertz of touch sampling advantage. Man, the triggers feel good. We lost Charlie. Now let's talk about the cameras. On the back, we have a triple camera setup with a 64 megapixel primary, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel bokeh depth sensor. And on the front, we have an 8 megapixel selfie camera. Now let me give you a quick tour of the camera app. So we have camera family mode, which I'll come back to. You've got pro mode, photo, video, night, and portrait. Now camera family will give you a whole bunch of features and effects, including their very own clone mode, just like Xiaomi. But what's special about Nubia's clone mode is you can clone objects and people, whereas Xiaomi's clone mode can only clone people. So Nubia's clone mode definitely opens the door for more creativity. So lots of other fun features to play around with like art mode. So you can select an art filter and as soon as you snap a shot, the art comes alive. And I also like that it gives you a choice whether you want to save the picture or not. In case you don't like the effect, you can try another one. 
There is also a macro mode and what's interesting here is you can see exactly where the camera is focusing via the round circle on the top left. So that means your macros can be shot exactly how you want them focusing on the part that's most important to you. Now whilst you're in your regular photo and video modes, there is no shortcut to change the resolution. Instead, you have to go into settings and tap resolution yourself, which feels like a few extra tasks than necessary. Now most smartphone software now gives you a simple shortcut from within the UI to switch resolutions. So hopefully Nubia watches my video and drops a firmware update to give us that convenience that we are already used to. So highest resolution for photos is 64 megapixels and highest resolution for video is 8K. So let's go outside and briefly test out the cameras. First up, 64 megapixel photos shooting at a resolution of 9216 by 6912. It is a dull cloudy day, but nevertheless, the 64 megapixel shots look quite detailed, natural in color, and you can zoom right into the photo with minimal loss of quality. And here are a few more 64 megapixel samples for you guys to check out. time for some video. We are shooting in 4K at 30 FPS. The video looks very stable and smooth in stabilization. Great color accuracy and contrast. You're getting a very natural looking video capture. Now I'm actually liking the result of the 4K video. You can also shoot in 8K but I will be making a separate video for 8K at a later stage. And here is some front camera video capture. It's a maximum resolution of 1080p. So that was my brief unboxing and first look of this smartphone. <laughs> well this was not supposed to be so detailed, I was only going to give you guys a taste. It looks like I ended up giving you a large bite of what this phone can do. I am quite impressed so far. My follow up review is coming soon after I get more time to test it. And as usual, I will be dropping various mini videos on the second channel. So battery life, charging tests, gaming, 8K video footage, etc. They will all be dropped very soon. So do subscribe to the second channel if you have not done so already. So yes, my initial thoughts are very good. The price is too good to ignore. If you're like me and you love playing games on your mobile, you would probably like this phone too. I do need to test the battery life on 165 hertz because that is the highest refresh rate on a smartphone so far and it is likely to drain that battery. Now I don't want to say too much at this stage in terms of my thoughts as I want to reserve judgment until I have used it more. Any questions or anything you'd like me to test specifically then do let me know in the comments and I will respond to you ASAP. So that concludes this video, my full review coming soon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.